Hello, my spooky darlings, and welcome to Streams and Screams, the online show thing in which I watch a film that is currently streaming online that I liked, and I tell you about it. Today, in honor of Halloween, in honor of spooky season, uh, I am going to be discussing a film titularly and appropriately called Halloween. Now, here's the question. Will I be discussing Halloween 1978? No, I feel it's a little too obvious. Will I be discussing Halloween 2018? No, because I feel like that kind of goes a little bit more in hand with the 1978 original because it is a continuation of that story. Today, I'm going to be discussing the very controversial, very divisive Rob Zombie's Halloween from 2007. Now, this film is currently available to watch on Shudder. I believe the whole Halloween franchise is on Shudder, so you can enjoy it there. But I think I wanted to discuss it today because it does have so many opinions floating around about it. And I'm sure you, as a viewer, if you've seen it, have a lot of opinions of your own. One of the big arguments, complaints, concerns, but also praises for this film is that it does give a little bit more context and depth and backstory to the Michael Myers character. We do see him as a child. We see a little bit more about him and what makes him the way that he is. There's a whole McDonald triad thing going on, which is a psychological uh, concept or, 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 or idea or philosophy theory, whatever you want to call it, that there are three sort of main indicators in a youth that can contribute to psychopathy or sociopathy later in life, the three things being setting fires, wetting the bed, and hurting animals. So we do see some of that here, which I, as a true crime nerd, thought was kind of fun because I am always a bit of a nerd about that sort of thing, even though the McDonald's Triad has been revisited more recently. But I do appreciate that Rob Zombie has made an attempt to make this character a little bit his own, make it a little bit more different by exploring that backstory and kind of what makes him the way that he is. Though there's still a lot more, obviously, to him than just his experiences. It is a combination of nature and nurture, and there is a very healthy dose of that here, which I do think is an interesting concept because usually we just see it's a strict nature. There's not really any information about the nurture side of things, and that's kind of a bit of a, a, a jump sometimes, I think, when you really want him to be like a very deeply evil character. It does have some very Rob Zombie <laughs> written dialogue. He absolutely has a style. He has a vibe. He has a whole tone to his scripts. Um, his writing of female characters is questionable. However, he definitely leans into the grindhouse era and that type of gritty, grimy, grungy, just kind of trashy character dialogue. Everybody's awful. Everybody has moments that you hear them say a line of dialogue and you're like, wow, okay. Um, but that's kind of a style and it really leans into that discomfort and that almost edgelordy feel to it. I do have to say this was released again 2007, which is around the time that they were making a lot of 1970s horror films as like edgy remakes. We had Friday the 13th, House of Wax, The Hills Have Eyes, which Alexandra Aja did a great job with that one, I think. Nightmare on Elm Street, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, which was actually really excellent. There's a lot of them. They came up quite a bit in the mid-2000s. I feel like that was an era when you know, we had grown up with a 90s teen horror cycle, very much its own particular vibe, its own particular type of, of energy and raising of, of a, a whole generation of horror movie watchers. As that generation grew up, got a little bit older, got a little bit edgier, got a little bit darker post 9-11. So that kind of had some things to say in there too. But they wanted something that was darker, that was grittier, that was uh, harsher, and uh, that made them feel like they could say like, ooh, this horror movie is not for everybody. And this horror movie is not for everybody. A lot of these horror movies, especially these remakes from the 2000s era, they did try and lean into making them a lot darker, a lot harsher. Not to say that the originals weren't um, pretty dark and harsh on their own, because when you think about it, that was a whole era of filmmaking that was really subverting expectations, but this is kind of the next step, the next level of that. The still, um, the desire to subvert those expectations, to challenge his audience, but with the next uh, progressive step in um, the next evolution, shall we say, of the horror genre and, and sort of where it went. Anyways, that was a big tangent. Back to Halloween. Scout Taylor Compton in this film is excellent as Laurie Strode. I do have some kind of, again, feelings about the, the script and the dialogue of this film because it's not 
my thing, really. However, I do really like how she plays the character, especially when she's going through everything that she's going through. She is a fantastic scream queen. You can see the genuine terror and fear and trauma in her face, in her eyes, in her scream. Continued on into Halloween 2, which I think was 2009, she really kind of stretches that a little bit further, which I feel was a really uh, appropriate route to take Laurie Strode because having survived this whole ordeal, you would carry on some trauma from that. So that makes sense to me. Michael Myers in the 2007 Rob Zombie version, I also think is particularly interesting because it does have that level of psychopathy, sociopathy, that he is completely detached from people around him. He uh, obviously has a bit of a soft spot for his mother and his baby sister. However, you know, he has this whole relationship with Danny Trejo's character, who's an orderly, I believe, um, who's been taking care of him for 20 years. And at the end of the day, he's still gonna kill him really brutally. So there's that. Also, there's another kind of, I feel, maybe unnecessarily harsh and um, trigger warning-ish scene in the... Um, institution involving two other orderlies and another female patient that I get where they're going with having this really be about Michael's connection with the masks and not about any kind of care for what's going on with anybody around him. So I get that. I just feel like maybe there was another way to do that. Maybe. I don't know. That's really kind of hard to get into. Because again, that's a very Rob Zombie thing to do, I think. I do think that there's a lot of divisiveness surrounding the inclusion of a backstory for Michael Myers, because a lot of people, I mean, obviously there's the backstory of him killing his family, but the background that goes into that even further. I think a lot of folks didn't like that it gave context to this character that's just supposed to be just pure straight evil. I actually kind of like it because I feel like it makes the character a little bit more human than say a Jason Voorhees who's very supernaturally not human but also thoroughly and deeply shows how dangerous and terrible and just brutish big burly bear of an angry man he is. There is some great production design in this film. I think it really kind of harkens back or echoes back to the 1978 original kind of honors that in a way, particularly um, like the lighting style and the, uh, the the imagery of it just in general. I mean, certain kills are very clearly echoed from uh, the original film. So that's a nice kind of tip of the hat. But I think overall, this is a very divisive film. <laughs> has a lot of opinions surrounding it. However, I do think for horror fans, it's not a bad time. Like it's a very aggressive horror film. It's a very strongly worded horror film, perhaps. Rob Zombie's films are not for everyone, and I think everybody realizes and acknowledges that. I don't think that's a surprise to anyone to hear that. But for those who like this film, generally, you really like it. For those who don't like this film, generally, you really don't. I kind of fall in the camp of appreciating this film for what it is and what it tried to do and what it was attempting to accomplish with this route with the character. I do think that that's a really kind of cool way to do it. And I also am a little bit of a sucker for that kind of gritty 2000s reboots of some 1970s horror films. Though really, it depends on the film because some of them are not great, but some of them are surprisingly fun. So if you want something that's a really kind of brutal, dark, aggressive Halloween horror film, this is a better one to pick than the 1978 original if you want something that is just angrier and meaner. I think this is definitely a meaner film than the original, but I do think that if you want to watch an absolute classic that completely revitalized and changed the game of horror and of slasher films in particular, then of course John Carpenter's classic is the way to go. You can watch both of them on Shudder. Um, if you want to do a double feature, you could either do this one in 1978, you could do this one in 2018, you could do this one in 2009. You got a lot of options. There's a it's a lot of Halloween movies. There's a, it's a big franchise. I guess that's all I have to say. I kind of muddled around a little bit with that one there as I was kind of working through my own thoughts on it. But having recently rewatched it, uh, I haven't seen it in a while. Um, I did kind of get a kick out of it because it is 
really violent and I generally kind of like that. So I don't know, but again, everyone's got opinions on it. I know I'm sure you do. If you'd like to share them in the comments, please feel free to do so. And um, yeah, thank you for watching. Happy Halloween. And you can watch a trailer somewhere around here. Okay, bye.